Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I give you Eita Horoshita. Thank you. Thanks for coming to my presentation. Uh, my name is Eita Horoshita, and I'm, I'm an individual participant of this event, and I'm from Japan. And today's topic is uh, natural language processing for the Phosphor-Z. And uh, so what I would like to show for today is this kind of maps. There are two types. And one, this one is a coropress map which shows some values of the regions by colors, as you know. But it's not a typical coropress map, but it shows the similarity of the relative similarity of the master plan of the city by colors. So, okay. Let me point out so some, uh, for example, so this place is a uh, uh, red color and this city is uh, the almost red color. It's, it means these cities have the similar master plan, uh, the similar contents of the master plan. So that kind of maps. And uh, let me check. So another one is uh, the document mapping. And it's not related to any kind of like geography. So it's uh, the XY coordinate, but XY coordinate is completely virtual. So it's not a geographic map, but uh, the each point is a uh, uh, text data. And uh, more concretely, it is a uh, Twitter data from the Twitter. So each point uh, is a uh, Twitter data. And so, and uh, the location is, it, it shows this also similarity of the document. So uh, similar, similar Twitter, similar text are located at the closer place. So uh, in other words, it's uh, automatically the documents are categorized and classified uh, with the same meanings. So I have a video, so let me start. And if you are zooming, you can visualize uh, uh, with the heat map. And so this place has a similar content of Twitter's. It's like a bot, but and the other places has uh, the other content. And similar documents are plotted at the uh, closer place, the same place. So you can automatically categorize the, these documents. I just visualized this on QGIS. So for example, this isolated island is a uh, weather report or so, that kind of things. And today uh, I'd like to explain uh, why I created this kind of maps or this kind of techniques and how I created with uh, some use cases and challenges as well. Okay. But before talking, uh, let me introduce myself for better understanding of the background. I used to be a city planner as my first career in Tokyo. And at the time, I started using GIS. It's a typical reason for urban planning. And after that, after a few years' experience, I decided to move to Sri Lanka to start up my coffee project because I am a coffee geek, maybe more than GIS. <laughs> but at the same time, I used uh, GIS for coffee because good cultivation of coffee is strongly related to its geographic features, such as elevations or soil condition, temperatures, rainfalls, or uh, uh, condition for transportation. But at the time, I started thinking, like, I can visualize. And so in both phases, I used GIS, and I found it very useful. But, and I found uh, I can visualize or evaluate the numeric quantitative things on GIS. However, how can I evaluate the uh, qualitative matters? such as like people's emotion or uh, friendly atmosphere or motivations or so on. 
So that is why I started running natural language processing in short NLP, because I believe uh, that uh, it will be a kind of like breakthrough for this question. About my technical background, I use QGIS, and uh, sometimes I use Leaflet for JavaScript library for uh, visualizing on the web, and some Python modules, uh, especially related to GIS and NLP related things. And let's get back to the maps I introduced in the beginning. So there are two maps, and both show the similarity of the contents of document. One is this conceptual corpus map is uh, by colors, and another one, document map, is by distance. And uh, this conceptual corpus map input is 120 urban plans around Tokyo and 170 cities abstract from Wikipedia. And similar plans are illustrated by similar colors. And another one, document map, is input 5,000 Twitter data. And similar text are plotted at the cross-up place. And map is a completely virtual, non-geographic XY coordinate. And about technical features, uh, similarity of document is numerically calculated based on keywords. So uh, basically, frequency of keywords. So uh, frequently appeared keywords in the document uh, regarded, should be regarded as the feature word of the document. However, if it is uh, used in the most of the other document as well, it's not a feature word, but it's just a common word, so less important. So like this, like this way, the, uh, the, in the document, the keyword, uh, importance of keyword and its partiality is calculated automatically on the program, and uh, the, the document is uh, converted into numerical features. And about the clustering and uh, deciding the location of or the coordinates, unsupervised machine learning approach is used for its clustering process. And unsupervised means you don't have to, so for example, this document map, you don't have to uh, define any categories before processing. But instead, a uh, computer program o automatically uh, decides the uh, location and uh, classify the categories in the, uh, in the way of uh, soft clustering. And so document vectorization and clustering is a typical, very typical natural language processing topic. So there are many kinds of uh, methods and there are many kinds of like, uh, open source programs for, for this use. So you, uh, the important thing is you have to uh, choose the best algorithm and the best modules. And it's usually available on, in Python. And you, you have to, uh, so you have to understand how it works and uh, the, how the hyperparameters for machine learning works. And choose the best one is very important, fact, very important point. And a little bit more about the use cases. It's very useful for understanding unexpected similarity of the cities for visualized way. So for example, uh, talking about this map, uh, this place, and maybe this place is a little bit uh, similar colors. So content of urban planning is somewhat similar, but uh, I didn't know that. And so you, uh, we can understand so unexpected, like uh, yeah, we can find unexpected things by this method. And categorizing input by uh, objectively objectively evaluated way. So machine learning is used, so computer define these things, so it's totally objectively evaluated way. And you may find interesting document by exploring the maps without read all of them. It's talk about the document map. So uh, when you, it is very difficult for you, for us to read uh, over thousand documents. However, 
if it is plotted like this kind of maps, you can remove some categories because you don't have to read them. So some categories, and you can find out the categories you are really interested in. And after that, you can uh, dive into the specific categories, and you can find out the, uh, the one you wanted to, you really wanted to see. So this, uh, for this purpose, uh, this kind of method are used. And uh, next, uh, I'd like to explain how to create this kind of things. Uh, there are totally six or seven steps for creating these maps. Uh, firstly, uh, of course, you have to collect the document. And as far as it is text data, and as far as you can collect them, uh, you can uh, input all kinds of data. For these cases, I use the city plans or Wikipedia data or Twitter because it's easy to get. So, but uh, if you have any kinds of data, text data, you can uh, make it as an input. And after collecting the document, uh, next step is morphological analysis. Uh, it, is, uh, it aims to divide the sentences into uh, words and words with a class of words or a stem of words. So uh, it is a morphological analysis. And after dividing the words with the class or stems, uh, the second step is vector space modeling. So uh, calculating the frequency of world or importance of world and uh, its partiality. And in this phase, is, uh, in this phase uh, the text data is uh, converted into numeric features. But it's uh, uh, really, so it's converted into the sparse matrix. And, and after that, the each document, uh, numeric document features are uh, compared each other. And uh, uh, the similarity is calculated. And third step is dimensionality reduction. Uh, output of this second phase, vector space modeling, the output has uh, uh, over 1,000 dimensions. And we, uh, sometimes it's ten, over 10,000 dimensions. And we cannot understand and we cannot see the, uh, such kind of high dimension. That is why uh, we have to reduce this high dimension into two or three. We can understand only two dimension or three dimensions. So sometimes uh, in this phase, uh, the, some uh, machine learning process is used as well. And if we if it is uh, reduced into two dimensions, x, y coordinate, you can visualize this uh, on your GIS software like QGIS. So that is an example of document mapping. And if it is reduced into three dimensions, x, y, z coordinate, it's also uh, visualized on the GIS software. But uh, for this time, I uh, converted x, y, z coordinate into RGB. Uh, values with normalization and uh, relating, it, relating them to its geographic features. This is the conceptual corpus map I introduced in the beginning. And the last one is visualize on the map. And so for visualizing, I used uh, QGIS and Reflect.js. And talking about more use cases, uh, Conceptual corporate map, the first one is uh, it's, uh, useful for uh, visualizing the result of unstructured interview or free home questions. So when I was a city planner, uh, I conducted many uh, kinds of uh, residents participatory meeting. It was a kind of trend of Japanese city plan at the time. So each city has a, a record, minutes of meeting of uh, residents participatory meeting. And so if it, these minutes of meetings are collected together and visualized on the map as a conceptual corpus map, you can uh, find out. So this city and this city have the similar uh, problem or a similar 
similar like discussions uh, of the like uh, as a result of the meetings. So this is uh, not I I've never tried this, but uh, I just uh, thought I I I it is it can be used for this kind of purpose. And the second one is illustration of political colors by region, or you can find out the unexpected similarity of the regions. It is the use cases for conceptual color press map and document mapping. It can be utilized for trend analysis. So document is plotted as a point, so you can uh, detect the centroid of the point. And if it is uh, visualized in the chrono chronological way, so for example, so last year's center of topics, centroid of topics are uh, this point, and this year is here, so it moves, it moved from here to this, this way. So next year, uh, the centroid of the point, centroid of the topic will be going this way. Uh, that kind of predictive analysis can be done by this method. And it's <laughs> uh, somewhat like, uh, fun uh, it seems like fantasy, but as I actually uh, doing that by using the patent data and academic paper. And then we can, uh, we can realize, so the next year, this kind of technologies will, will rise up or something. So this kind of trend analysis can be done by document mapping. And white space detection as well, if the, for example, academic, uh, if I visualize uh, many kinds of like academic papers, and so it is categorized and uh, visualized on the heat map, and this place is, and this place is really well developed or uh, researched. But uh, the space between these areas are not researched well, so this kind of white space detection is also uh, can be done by this document mapping. Th these are the use cases. But actually, there are many challenges as well. Uh, in the first place, the accuracy is not enough, actually. So I need to choose the best algorithm for the purpose. And I need to choose the best parameter for machine learning process. So it's still on the development phase and trial phase, actually. And I, another one is I, wanted, I want to add some uh, additional data, like uh, the result of emotional analysis. So, but uh, I, I couldn't realize it uh, by using open source software. So it's still on the development phase. And third one is the document of, uh, sorry, the development of QGIS plugin for NLP based analysis. So this kind of uh, analysis and creation of document mapping or, uh, uh, or conceptual mapping, uh, if this kind of things can be done by Q, through QGIS plugin, but by just one click, it's very useful. It can be very useful, I think. So, uh, so actually, there are many uh, things to be done, and there is much. I understand there is much room for improvement, but I think uh, it's there is many possibilities for NLP for phospho G. So if you come up with any ideas, good ideas to utilize this kind of natural language processing method for phospho G, uh, please let me know. That's all from me. Thank you so much. Which natural language were you using, and are there differences between languages on how well this method can be applied? Which natural language? Okay. Um, I think it's very useful for at least the patent data or academic papers because it's very structured and the contents are really rich. But uh, and Twitter data is a little bit short. 
for processing. And the city planning I introduced for today is not so good because uh, it's all often published in the PDF file, and I convert it the, from PDF file to text, but the PDF file is unstructured, so it's very difficult to uh, uh, implement the accurate processing. So, what I really meant was, uh, were you using uh, Japanese or English? Ah, okay, okay. Uh, both possible, and I use this kind of uh, this kind of like uh, open source or free uh, software. And for English, I used NLTK, Natural Language Toolkit. And in Japanese, there are many, um, many uh, software or programs for morphological analysis. So for example, Makeup I used. And some language is very difficult because, uh, for example, in Japanese, there is no space between words and words. So that is why uh, for morphological analysis, uh, it, we have to use a good internal dictionary to devise the words. But it's possible. You can do it by uh, open source software or program by using these. So language ma doesn't matter, I think. Sorry, uh, again. In terms of infrastructure, how many machine do you, virtual machine do you need to process? Uh, machines, or inf yeah. Okay. Uh, if the size of the document, or if the size of the file, total size of the file uh, will be, uh, becomes massive, you, I think uh, uh, it's impossible to process on my laptop. So you have to use some kind of, yes, and yeah. Uh, especially uh, for the large size of the document, you have to use the good machine for uh, deep learning or so specialized for deep learning or something. Yeah. So uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you were searching for better hyperparameters for the machine learning algorithms and also different machine learning algorithms. How do you evaluate which works better than the other? For evaluation of the accuracy, it's a, a difficult point actually, and I, can, I cannot evaluate. So, uh, so after the processing, in the first place, I have to do is checking and uh, comparing with my like uh, comparing with my impression. So <laughs> I'm sorry for my poor English. Uh, for example, I I processed uh, this kind of maps maps using city planning, and actually. This is my hometown, and this is the, uh, the, the, the other town. And I think, in my impression, these cities must be similar. However, it's not similar, totally different. So somewhat different, but uh, it has to be similar so some, to a certain extent. So I, uh, so I thought it's, the accuracy is not perfect enough. So you, I think after processing, you have to uh, compare with your first impression answer with the outcome. And if it is 6% uh, correct, uh, it is, uh, I think, good result. And another like 20% is uh, new findings behind, the, behind your impression, like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I <laughs> It's not a good question, uh, not a good answer, but. <laughs> we have one more question in the back. How do people follow up with you? What's the best way to get in contact? Follow up, follow up uh, with me. Yeah. Uh, you can contact me. Uh, okay, how can I? So, yeah. So, do you have Is any? Email and yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, 
but uh, okay, let me let me lie down. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Peter, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.